you guys a long time no see. It's Miska Cat here for Jen. Um, coming in with another floss tube update. Um, this is my 17th floss tube video, so if you're a regular visitor to this channel, thank you for coming back. Um, if you are new to this channel, I hope you enjoy my video, you like what you see, um, you'll subscribe, leave me a comment, that would be awesome. Um, so yeah, it's been a while. I um, actually didn't do a regular update last month with doing the Winter Olympic um, vlog that I did. Um, I was actually going to do one at the end of the month, but that just didn't happen. So I'm a little bit late, um, but yeah, so here I am. I have a lot to show off. Um, I have two FFOs, a finish, there's a few new starts. Um, basically I'm just going to be showing a bunch of progress. Um, I'm not going to do before videos because I, or before pictures because I'm not exactly sure uh, what it looked like last time you guys saw it um, with doing the, the vlogging. So um, on that note, um, my husband is actually he works for the Oilers and our season is pretty much done. So he's going to be home a lot more. I don't do videos when he's home. So I think for the summer and until hockey season starts again, I think I might just be doing um, the vlogging because I think that's a little bit easier for me to do a couple minute snippets here and there and then um, edit them all together um, at the end of the month to make a video. So. I think that's what I'm going to do, um, like I say, for the next couple of months, so hopefully hopefully that'll work for you guys. Um, I know that will probably work a lot better for me, and then I won't vanish like I did last summer, so, um, so that's what I'm going to try doing. So might as well get started. Um, these are going to be in kind of no particular order. Um, I guess I will show you my whips first, what I've done, I'll show you the finishes, and then I'm going to follow up with um, some knitting, because I actually, um, I've kind of gotten bitten by the bug. Orietta, I know you totally understand, so, <laughs> um, but I do actually have a finish with that as well too, and um, some progress and another new start for knitting projects, so, so let's get at it. Um, the first thing that I'm going to show you is going to be a new start that I had for um, the Stitch Mania Winter Olympics. Um, and that is going to be, oop, and I don't think I actually have, don't have a photo of it. See, not prepared at all. Uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Just talk amongst yourself for a second. Um, this is actually going to be a bell pull that I've had in my stash for a crazy amount of time. Hopefully I can actually find a photo of it. I guess I could always just insert a picture. I'm really not fond of the editing though. So this is Summer Afternoon by Chatelaine, and I'll kind of zoom in and, oop, glare. So that is what the top half of it looks like, and then that is going to be what the bottom half looks like. And I've had this actually kitted up for probably at least a couple years, and never started it, never started it. And 
originally my goal was going to be I have three sets of Millennium Frames, like the long bars. One is a really long one, one is a medium one, and then one is a really small, I think, 8-inch um, set. My goal... Attack! Hi. My goal was originally going to be to put a project on each... Um, set of bars and I was going to leave that project there until it was done. So the large one had my haid, um, the medium one has a mirror on it, and then I had nothing for the small one. And I figured, well that's just a waste, so I should start something either small or long and skinny. And this is what I decided to um, pull out or start. That whole plan of keeping things on the bars until they're done, it's already been kiboshed, but I mean, it was a good intention. Um, so this is, I think I have to go down. I'm sorry, buddy. Um, so this is how far I got. I haven't actually stitched on this since um, working on it for the Olympics, but I will show you my progress anyways. And this is how far I got. And I only really worked on this a few days so it stitched up actually quite quickly and I'm really not sure what fabric this is oh, no, it's not that good. that's better so it's this really nicely modeled yellowy greeny I think this was like a one of in my stash that I ended up getting so I'm not sure what the color is but I thought it would be appropriate for this piece and so far I'm loving how it looks so um, this one's actually really quite nice too because it doesn't call for a lot of silks I think there's only about four silks um, two Krennix, which I subbed out, um, Petite Treasure Braid, and two packages of beads. So it's, as far as a Chatelaine is concerned, relatively inexpensive. So if you're looking to try a Chatelaine, maybe try one of her smaller Velcro um, ones. She's got several of designs that are kind of in this category where the supplies aren't like crazy like a huge mandala so so that is the first piece I have worked on although I haven't worked on it since last month so okay one down um, the next thing is going to be and I'm not you know what I'll just show you um, if you guys didn't um, watch my one video. My mom and I have been busy um, making project bags. So this is what the Chatelaine one lives in. So, and then I put little bead pulls. And then this is the inside of this one. And we decided to do a pocket in this one. So, so that is what the Chatelaine is officially living in right now. It's not, well, I guess it kind of is. I was going to say, it's not quite big enough, big enough to put my scroll bars in, the 8-inch ones, but they actually do fit, so I guess that's kind of a bonus. Keep everything together, right? And keep the cat hair off. Um, the next one is going to be my the Quaker and that is living in this bag with its polka dots on the inside and you'll have to forgive me I was kind of just scrambling to get everything ready for this video so nothing is taken off frames and I'm gonna have to adjust as I go but it'll be fine you guys will bear with me right 
So this is my coffee Quaker. And I pulled this one out for the Mania as well too. And I ended up doing this top motif here. I finished that and then I did the bird and started on this motif here. And this one I am subbing out all the colors for what I kind of had in my stash. And this is how this one is doing. Oh, and I also did the, um, I did 18 for the year because theoretically the goal is to finish this this year. So, um, and this is on a piece of, I'm going to say maybe sable, maybe not. I'm not sure what the fabric is. I'll uh, put it down below in the comments. So, um, but it is from Fitcher This Plus, that much I know. And... I am loving the way it is looking on here. I am really enjoying stitching this one and I really just need to get busy and stitch on it more. Here comes the cat again. <laughs> Sawyer, what do you want, Buzz? What do you want? Wants to be a star. Um, so yeah. That is the coffee Quaker. Come here, you little buddy. Oh my gosh, you're so fuzzy. You're so fuzzy. And this is by the Heartstring Samplery. Um, um, the designer's name is Beth Twist. So, but you guys probably all know that already, because you guys have all finished it and stitched it, and it's all framing framed and hung on your walls and you're able to look at it completed every day. That's where everybody else is with that one. And I am obviously very late to the party. <laughs> um, okay, so the next one is going to be in this bag. And as you can tell, well maybe you can't tell on this one, there is like tons of kitty fur on the top. So, bag's doing his job. I actually have to say, like, there's not a lot of kitty fur on most of my projects anymore. Come on. Sit down. Thank you. So this is going to be my Halloween Quaker, Quaker Gone Spooky. And this is by Michelle Inc. of Needlework Designs. There. So if you haven't seen this one, I know Emily has this one and Jennifer Upton has this one as well too. I don't know if anybody else does, but um, this was my new start for the year. Um, and I tell you, that tree is going to be the death of me. The tree is so big and it's very... It's very particular with the way that you stitch it, so, and it's huge. So this is how far I have gotten with this one. So I have done the angel, I have mm -hmm. done the bats, I've made a start on the tree, I've done a couple of these other little motifs. But the tree is looking awesome. It's the angel. I love the owl. The owl is probably my favorite part so far. So that is how far I have gotten. Um, I'm actually almost done this page with the tree on it. So I think after that is done, I'm going to move the frame and do some more of the tombstones and kind of work on the tree in sections because it's so big, so big. 
And the way that you have to stitch it is you have to stitch it going up and down. So you can't stitch it in the short rows, you have to stitch it in the long rows to get the proper effect to it. And it is so big, <laughs> so big. Um, so yes, but it is enjoyable. I'm actually, I really enjoy this one. I just, um, it's kind of nice to work on something a little bit more mindless every once in a while, as opposed to um, like hates and whatnot else. It's nice to just pick something up quickly in a few snap and be able to work on it um, for a couple minutes here and there. So, And this, if I did not mention, is stitched on a piece of, uh, what is it, 36 even weave? 36 count even weave, 32 count even weave in Rock Quarry mm -hmm. by Silky Verse. And this lovely grind guard, I don't know if you can see, my friend made for me. And I love those skulls. They got like sparkly red eyes. It's awesome. Love it. So I figured this was an appropriate project. Normally I actually don't use grind guards, but because this one has so much fabric around it, I'm kind of forced to. So, um, so that is my Quaker Gone Spooky. Okay. The next one that I worked on, um, is it in this bag here? I love these bees. So happy. So pretty fabric. Um, is going to be sorry about that. <laughs> you guys fell over. Um, I kind of had a feeling that was gonna happen. Second here. There we go. Um, the next one that I worked on, and I've worked on this one since um, the um, the Stitch Mania Winter Olympic um, thing, is going to be Gathering Honey by Plum Street Sampler. And if you don't remember, I started this one like several years ago at one of my stitch camps. Still not done. I thought this would be a quick stitch. It's not. Um, but I have worked on it more. And this is how far I have gotten so far. This border down here looks so good. It is a pain. But it looks so good. Um, and then I got kind of bored with that, so I decided to come up and start doing um, some of the lettering here. But I did most of the wording during the Olympics. Um, the wording actually goes by really quick, but the rest of it is a little bit more meticulous. So, And this is on a piece of Picture This Plus in... Oh my gosh, my fabrics are escaping me right now. I, again, I'll put a comment down below and let you know what I'm stitching this on. But it's kind of a yellowy, greeny, similar to the, um, the Chatelaine. And I'm really liking it on here. It is on 32 or 36 count. I'm stitching it one over one because I'm crazy like that. Because why not? I wanted it a little. <laughs> a little it will be. Um, okay, and then the last thing that I've worked on, and I have been using this for the... Full Coverage Fanatics. Um, what is it? 
stitch by the numbers where you have to stitch the 1200 stitches challenge. This is the piece I'm using for it. And it's in a O Canada bag with just relining on the inside. Not overly exciting. Um, this is the one that was on my large um, Q snaps, and I kind of burnt myself out on it. Um, I've almost gotten two pages done since the beginning of the year. That's actually quite a lot for me to do on a haid um, before the end of the year, even. Um, but I kind of burnt out on it. I'm going to take a break from it, and um, I, I'm still using this. I'm going to do my 1200 stitches this month, she says now. And hopefully I will finish up the second row on this, but we'll see. But this is Grow by Marcia Dal Marta Dalig, charted by Hayde. And this is how far I have gotten on her. So I really, really had wanted to finish up the second row this month, and it just did not happen. Um, but hopefully maybe this month, once I've had a bit of a break from her, maybe I'll get some incentive to work on her some more. It's really not a whole lot, um, especially this is all just kind of filling in on the side here. I've done all the black on that page. Um, so I really just need to finish up her hair and do some filling in. You can see all the white spots that I still have to do there, but that won't take very long, hopefully. I'm really loving the way that she's charted. She looks amazing. Um, I know she's not everybody's cup of tea, but I'm a little weird, so... So I would actually really like to get the second row done. Um, I would actually really like to get the third row done by the end of the year. I don't know if that's realistic or not for me, um, but I'd like to see her finished. I started her the year it came out, like shortly after she was released. I was um, in love with her. So that was in 2011 and yeah, I should have been done by now. There's people that do hates in like a year. <laughs> Six months, three months, like, or Jessie Marie does like, you know, like 30,000 stitches in a day, which is crazy. Anyways, um, I'm not quite that crazy, but hopefully I can maybe get the third row done this year because I would like her up on my wall. Um, the page, the two pages on the side on either side are pretty much all black. I know I'm going to struggle to get through those pages, but the nice thing is, is if I put her on my millennial frame, I can work all the way across the row. So I think I'm going to alternate between the black and then her face. Um, to, hopefully that will kind of keep me motivated. So, and then I'm not working on either just confetti or solid blocks. That's going to be my, my strategy going forward. So but I am loving the way that she looks. So. You will see her hopefully again this month. Um, like I said, I just, I needed a break from her. So. Um, so I decided to sub out her for something a little bit brighter and cheerier. And I decided to pull and put my butterfly lace back up on my Millennium frame. I've only actually worked on this for a couple days so far since doing it, but I've made some progress. So this is where it is right now. Before I had pulled this out, I had done only this half pretty much of the filigree. So the top half, and I've done pretty much all of this in the last couple days. Um, I'm almost done all the stitching. I've done the specialty rice stitches that are in there. Um, I have 
one of these little butterflies to stitch in right here. And then there's, I actually could start on the big butterfly right away if I wanted to. Um, but I still have the beads to do on this lower half and I have the outlining and back stitching to do. Um, and a little bit of black work, but I am super happy with the way this is looking. If I can get them a little closer without knocking things over. There we go. So I think after I'm done this butterfly, I am going to roll it back up and I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to start doing the last border around it. Um, just to get done the top, top two pages in its entirety. Um, then all I really have left is going to be this bottom corner. I don't know if you can see through the snap, but I'll have the other corner down here and that's going to be the last little bit of main stitching that I have, plus the large butterfly that's going to sit right here. So I would really like to get this one done too. <laughs> Eventually. Um, I would like to say this year, but I don't, I don't know if that's reality either, but girl can dream, right? So, but I find once I get sucked into this one, I get, that's all I want to work on. Like it's so, so pretty. And it's kind of nice to stitch on something for an hour and actually see progress on it. Whereas I find sometimes the haids and the full coverage pieces, it's like, oh, you stitch for an hour and it's really kind of hard to tell without pictures what you've done. So, but anyways, and there is hope for this one to be finished soon. Yay. And that's pretty much all of my progress that I've done. Um, I have been doing a lot of stitching. Um, it doesn't really seem like it, but um, there has been quite a bit of progress made. Um, I do want to show one other project. Um, I have it kitted up and ready to go. Um, I'm going to start this one, I'm thinking, maybe after the Halloween uh, Quaker Gone Spooky is done. Um, what is her Instagram name? Crafting Kim 95 I think. I will link her below. If you are not following her on Instagram, you should be. Because um, she is a bad influence. I don't know if she watches these videos or not, but she's a bad influence. And Kim, Kim in Canada... And she is a terrible influence as well, too. Hi, Kim. How are you doing? Um, sh they're both terrible. Because they both want me to start a new project. And I really want to start it. Because I've had it in my stash forever. But I'm a little... I'm a little intimidated by it. Um, maybe I'll have to talk to Stephanie. Stephanie, you like backstitching, right? If I do all the stitching and all the cross-stitching, I'll send it to you and you can finish it up in backstitching for me. Okay? No? Okay. I tried. Um, but I have it ready to go. It's in a pumpkin bag. Because go figure it's a Halloween piece. Yay. It's got orange lining. And she really wants me to start because she started this one and I made a comment because it looks amazing. This is um, Crafting Kim. It looks amazing. I love this piece. Um, it's by X's and O's. And it is called Pumpkin and Crow. How cool is that picture? I love it. I think she started in one of these corners and she's doing these leaves. Oh my god, they look amazing. Um, the crow looks amazing. Pumpkin looks amazing. If you could see the backstitch on this, it is insane. I'm not a backstitcher. This is going to drive me crazy. But it is so cool. I pulled it out. I looked at it again. Now I want to start it. Ay, ay, ay. So I do have 
fabric for it. I'm just going to do it on white um, 25 count um, Liliana because I didn't want, I think with a hand dyed fabric it might lose some of the detail of the piece, but so I have that. I have my box of bobbins. There's not a lot of colors in it. So I think to stitch up it will be okay. Like I say, just that back stitching is oh, so intimidating. So intimidating. But I think I might start that. I actually have camp coming up soon. Yay! Um, my stitch camp is going to be at the beginning of May. First week of May? Somewhere at the beginning of May. Um, what I've done in the past is I've always saved new starts and started something new each day at camp. I don't know if I'm going to do that this time. I think I might take the three projects that are on my Millennium Frame. So I'll take Grove, My Mira, and Chatelaine. Small Chatelaine. Not big Chatelaine. Small Chatelaine. The camp is from... You show up Wednesday afternoon. So you have like a half day on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday are full days, and then half a day on Sunday. I think... I'm going to take a couple smaller projects too, just to work on in Q-snaps, just because um, sometimes late at night you don't feel like focusing that much, especially after you've worked on the same project pretty much all day. So I think maybe I will start that one in a Q-snap. I don't know. I'm playing with the idea right now. But there's like half a million other projects that I also want to start. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I feel like I should take the Gathering Honey because that was started at camp and it's still not done. I should probably take that and do, work on it at least a little bit, but we'll see. I will for sure be taking Grove. I'm going to be taking my Butterfly Lace to show off because everybody loves to see that one. And then I will be taking, like I say, probably my Mira and probably the Shadowing, small Shadowing. And maybe one new start. Still have time to plan. Okay, <laughs> so those are all of my whips. That's what I've worked on. Um, I did actually have one other new start and it is finished. It is not FFO'd yet, but I have plans. Um, I will be turning this into a pillow because I love it and I want to see it all the time. And you have to excuse the wrinkles, but this is called The Raven. This is by La Di Da, and I started this one for the Po Sao from the Bewitch Stitches Facebook group, the one that was started by Maui Jen and Amy, um, Amy, 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 Amy Bill. Sorry, I butchered that. I know what it. I know what it is. I just can't say it. <laughs> Um, but they started a stitch along um, for Edgar Allan Poe. They had provided a free pattern of Edgar Allan Poe. Love it. Um, I think it's done now because maybe it's still going on. But you can, if you're stitching anything with Poe, you can put it on Instagram with the hashtag EAP Macabre. So. If you're interested and want to join in, anything Poe related, there's lots of ravens out there. Um, it was really fun and I, again, had this pattern for like a million years and never started it and it stitched up so quick. Um, I didn't use the call for threads, I pulled my own from what I had in stash. Um, this is on a piece of Silk Weaver Rock Quarry as well, so same as the Spooky Halloween. Spooky, Quaker Gone Spooky. I have to say this is becoming one of my favorite fabrics for like dark and moody pieces. I love it. It looks so good. Um, but this is the Raven. And I am super happy with how it turned out. It stitched up, like I say, so fast. 
so fast. This was like, I started it one week and within two weeks working on it off and on, it was done. So like I say, I substituted all the colors. So the Raven here is done in black coral by Dinky Dyes. The lettering is done in Shoot, what was that one? Oh, I tell you, colors are totally escaping me today. Miss Gloriana, Havana Brown. So all the lettering is Havana Brown. And then this um, kind of little pattern down here is also in a Gloriana. And it is in color Sage. So all silks that I had in my stash, fabric I had in my stash. I happily got a $14 credit from Stitch from Stash, yay me. And this is gonna be turned into a pillow very shortly. I just haven't had time. Um, but super happy with it. I'm totally in love with it. Like I say, stitched up ridiculously fast. Um, and I actually surprisingly didn't have a lot of frogging to do on it. I counted really well on this one. <laughs> but, love it. Love it, love it. So that is my first finish that I did. Um, the second one is an FFO. And I started this for the Stitching Olympics as well, too. And I finished it. Did I finish it? I almost finished it through the... Um, the stitch along. Didn't quite finish it, but was really close. And then I just had to assemble it. So this is my Princess Snow by Just Nan. She is super cute. I love her. And her fuzzy ears and her little crown. And that's the side of her. And her little backside. Oops. She's actually very sparkly. And that side. And these are super cute. I love them. I did um, Mr. Nutley. Um, he was a little owl as well too. I have two little witches to do as well. But I have to say I did a much better job on the bottom of her than the first one, but actually all around I did a better job assembling this one, so. But they hang out on my shelf together. They're pretty good friends. She's a little high maintenance, but you know, it's the way it goes. He's a little woodsy. Um, so those I finished. The other one is a finish that I did quite a while, but I finally got it into a frame. So happy I did. Um, this is just like a cheap, cheap frame from Michaels. Finished up in the back. And this is my Bumblebee Lace Sampler. It's so glary. So I finally got that frame. I had to put it into a shadow box because of the um, the dimension of the bee. I thought about putting some like little things inside of it, but I just, let's face it, I was just happy to get into a frame. So that is what it looks like. It's just tiny. It's very glary. The back is a little bit, um, thick because I left all the fabric um, just in case I ever decide to reframe it um, properly. Um, I also did consider burning this one, McKenna, but just didn't seem to warrant it. So I'm sorry, but I'll work on that. Maybe my next piece. Um, but I'm super happy with the way it turned out. And it's framed so simply. 
but it really shows off the piece itself, so I'm okay with it. Love this piece. This is one of my favorite finishes ever. <laughs> I'm so proud of this one, so. So, that's the end of my stitching update. Um, if you don't want to see what I've been knitting, that is perfectly fine. Um, I will check in with you guys soon again. Um, thank you for watching if you've watched this far. Um, I'm just going to show a couple projects for my knitting and then that's it. Um, unfortunately, fortunately, um, I have no haul to show you because I've actually been a good girl. I haven't bought anything except for yarn. I've kind of gone a little. I wouldn't say crazy with yarn, but I've bought a few skeins and if anybody, <laughs> any of you guys knit, uh, you know, really nice sock yarn is not cheap. So it's easy to get that added up. But, um, so the first thing that I'll show you is one of my socks. Um, I have the mate already stitched. Um, this I've actually started quite a while ago. This was back when it took me a year to stitch a sock, let alone a pair of socks. Um, this is actually the Lion brand. So oh, there's no, there's no picture for it. Lion brand basic sock. This is the first sock pattern I ever used. If you are interested in making socks, this one is pretty basic. Um, the instructions are really well laid out. They make perfect sense. Um, there's nothing fancy with it. It's pretty much just straight knitting until you get to the heel and the toe, but basic things that you need to know, decreases, increases, it's pretty simple. So, so this is how far I have gotten on this one and this is in Patton's Croy Sock FX so that kind of gives it a bit of that variegation. Um, the first sock that I did I forgot to take in for the gusset and thought I was not going to have enough yarn to do um, one ball per sock so that's why I did the black heels. Um, had I taken in the gusset, I would have had enough to just do it all in one color, but too late now. Now they have to match. So this is the mate. So I did black heels, black toes. Like I say, it's literally just knitting. This is rib. That's knitting. There's the gusset that I forgot on this one. Um, I've learned a few other little tricks um, since starting this one. So this one's actually going to probably be a little bit nicer, but whatever. They're for me. My goal is to eventually only be wearing hand knit socks. I think that's possible. I've done... This is the second time I've done this pattern. The first time it was just straight one color. Um, and then... Oh, actually this is the third time I've done this pattern. Hmm. It's a pretty easy pattern. Recommend it. Um, so this is my third pair of this um, like I say, I don't, I don't mind it. It works. This one I find with the Croy yarn is, I think it's because it's straight knitting, it's a little bit thicker. Sorry about that. Um, well, you guys don't know. Um, anyways, so that is my one sock that I've been working on. Third pair. Third pair. Um, the next thing that I will show you is going to be my knitting finish. Yay! And this is a pair of socks that I finished. This is in um, Colorway Rainbow Bright. This is from the Fiber Imp. She has a Etsy store. Her yarn is amazing. Um, the whole reason I bought her yarn is because it was so beautiful. I loved it. Um, the first thing that I've ever knit with it. Um, it knits really nice. Um, and she was close to where I grew up. So her Etsy store is actually, she's in Lethbridge, Alberta. So um, her yarn is beautiful. Um, I have several other skeins of it. I can't wait to use the rest, but this was my ultimate favorite. I love it. Colorway Rainbow Bright. That was 
right? How beautiful is that color? And I have two of them. Two finished sockies. Um, so this one I stitched, or I knit, um, in the simple SKYP pattern, sock pattern. And that is what it looks like. Um, so every um, every couple rows you do the, the stitch um, and it creates this pattern. Super easy to do. Super easy to keep track of. Um, it's easy to count. So like when it says do 25 repeats of this pattern, it's easy to count. You don't have to keep track like you normally do, like I normally need to do. Um, but that is how they turned out. That is my heel. Again, I forgot the gusset on the first one. Don't like doing gussets. I always forget about them. Um, that is the top. So you keep doing the pattern all the way down the front of the foot. I love it. Um, I finished these, I threw them in the wash, and I wore them twice that first week. So they're, they're looking a little fuzzy at the top already. That's okay. I'm cool with it. Doesn't bother me. Um, this yarn is a little bit, um, I don't want to say thinner, but it's not like for a good heavy wool winter sock. It's more a little bit airier. Maybe it's just the pattern that I did. Um, but I have one pair that I knit myself and they are, I washed them and I threw them in the dryer and they felted. So they're super warm. I can barely get my foot into them. But um, if I know I'm going to be working outside and I need my feet to be warm, those are the ones I pick, not these ones. But I'm super happy with the way that they turned out. Actually, when I wear them, the stripes almost kind of match across my feet. Totally unintentional. Love the way it turned out, though. Um, so, yeah. And this pattern, again, super easy to follow, too. Um, this is the first time I've actually done um, a pattern, obviously, for socks, because I've made three of the simple knit ones. Um, and this was super easy to follow. So, highly recommend that one. It was, again, a free... Um, pattern on Ravel, Ravelry. So, um, simple SKYP sock. Check it out. So those are done. Those have been worn several times. And the next thing that I will show you is my new start. Um, I should also show you the leftover fabric from the big project bags. We've been making these little triangular bags. They are perfect for socks. <laughs> I love them. Um, they fit your socks. You can fold up your pattern, throw it in there, and there's enough room for your needles and um, my tape measure. I have a tape measure. Love this little guy. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just throw everything in there and then I take my socks to work and I knit on them and it's awesome. So the next thing that I started, and this is the most beautiful yarn ever. I don't know if you guys can buy it at your local knitting shops. Um, it's called Adam and Eve. Excuse the $32 price tag. Adam and Eve, the colorway is Ash, is the one that I've done. It is Merino, Cashmere, and Nylon. But it says at the bottom that it's handmade for River City Yarns. That is where I bought this. That's the name of the store. So I don't know if that is the only place that you can buy it. This yarn is gorgeous though. I love it. Um, I actually went and got another ball of this exact color. Because um, this pair of socks is actually for a friend of mine. She's very lucky. I love her though. So... Um, and I should have read the pattern first because you have to do stuff with an embroidery needle and I didn't cut any 
yarn off before I wound it into a ball and I hand wind these. I don't have a winder so I can't make the center pull so darn shame I had to go get another color or another ball of it. But this is colorway ash. It's got like little black speckles in it. Love it. Love it. It is super soft. It is super squishy. It is going to be the best pair of socks ever. Um, and after I'm done making my friend this pair, I'm hopefully going to have them done by camp because I will see her there and hopefully I will be able to surprise her with them. Um, and then I'm going to make myself an exact same matching pair. Um, but this is, what's the name of this pattern? This is Fighter Socks by Terry Knight. Again, this is a free pattern on Ravelry. And I have my friend's foot size there, so I won't show you that. But that is what the socks look like. Um, so I stitched, knit, stitched, um, the first spider. And this is what it looks like. I am so excited that I did this. <laughs> it's like, I made this. I made a spider out of yarn. I love it. I love the colorway. I think he shows up really well. And I'm just, I'm so happy with it. So happy with it. So I've done the first half of the, the pattern. Now I'm going to do the heel do the gusset. I'm not going to forget it this time. And then finish it up. And then that's, you need um, the extra yarn to do these little spiders here. So you're supposed to do a French knot for their head and you're, it sounds like you kind of weave the thread around the main body to kind of maybe poof it out a little. I, I don't really know. Um, but so far so good. I haven't screwed up this pattern yet. And then that is what the back looks like. It's got this beautiful twist to it. And I am just loving this. I am loving this pattern so far. And it's super stretchy. The top is super stretchy. And I just fly it around it. How do you go wrong with that? Oh, I'm just, I'm in love with it. The yarn, gorgeous. If you can get your hands on some of it, you should try and get your hands on some of it. It is beautiful. Very squishy socks. Um, so this sock has been living in this Luhelia Midnight Tree um, yarn with candy corn lining why not but and that's the tag again Adam and Eve Trisha you should buy this yarn it's Adam and Eve I know you'll like it I don't think you watch my videos but if you do and you think you knit don't you you knit or you crochet anyways you should buy that yarn make some socks with spiders on it um so that is my update for you guys. Thank you for being patient with me. Um, I appreciate you waiting while I got my crap together to actually do this video. Um, like I say, I think the next couple are going to be more vlog style. I just think it's going to be easier over the summer um, with my husband home so he doesn't catch me talking to myself. He knows I do videos, but it would just be weird with him listening in. Um, so anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, thank you to all of my subscribers. I appreciate every single like, comment, um, every, subscri every subscriber that I get. I appreciate all of you guys. Um, I'm going to get this uploaded. Um, and then maybe I'll go work on Butterfly Lace and start vlogging. We'll see. Anyways, take care, guys. Um, 
that's all I really got to say. So thank you very much, and I will see you all the next time.